yeah, hello everyone. Um, thanks for taking the time to join our webinar today. Um, my name is Annette Gilbert, um, an onboard solutions specialist here at Creditor Watch. Um, I'll be your host for today, joined by the lovely Caitlin Knight, um, another onboard solutions specialist um, based in our Sydney office um, at Creditor Watch. Hi Annette, hi everyone, thanks for joining today. Thanks Caitlin. So just to get straight into it, um, we have, I guess before we get straight into it, um, we do have um, a few points just want to kind of cover off. Um, so this session is recorded um, and it will be made available for you to re-watch after the session. Um, if you have any questions um, throughout the session, just feel free to send them through in the question box um, and we'll try to address them during. Um, otherwise, um, if we don't get to your questions, we'll reach out afterwards um, and, and answer them individually. So in today's webinar, we'll be talking about um, a couple points, all about the, I guess, the customer onboarding um, part of the credit management process. Um, we'll start with common customer onboarding challenges, um, just a lot of customers that we, we deal with and, and what they face day to day, um, challenges with manual or paper-based traditional application forms, and then we'll jump into, you know, why you need a digital onboarding process and why it's so important. Great. So for those of you who are not familiar with um, with Creditor Watch and who we are, we are the leading um, we are a leading commercial credit bureau um, and technology company specialising in commercial credit risk solutions for our customers. Um, we we do take um, enormous pride in taking care of our customers and enabling them with the best tools and solutions um, to simply get on with business um, and trade confidently. So today's session, as I mentioned, is all about the, um, the onboarding um, part of the process, customer onboarding, um, and what the best practice is. Um, for, you, for you to move forward. Um, while we kind of started off as a commercial credit bureau only 13 years ago, um, we have uh, rapidly you know, expanded our offering to help trade credit providers like yourselves to better manage their credit risk through all stages of the customer journey or the customer relationships from end to end, that full credit risk management. Um, whether it be you know, onboarding new customers quickly, getting them on board, um, keeping up to date with changing and challenging credit risk levels throughout the customer relationship, um, or right through to maximising your cash flow um, by automating that collection side of things. Um, Creditor Watch, Credit Watch software, um, data and insight solutions um, really do help businesses like yours um, manage credit risk um, in an efficient, um, structured way. So you can protect essentially and, and grow your business. So in today's session, we are focusing in on the customer onboarding process. Um, and this does span from filling in the credit, getting your customer to fill in the credit application, doing your, um, your credit assessment and due diligence before you move forward through to approving or rejecting that application then onboarding the customer and making sure you mitigate future risk by registering your security interests um, and adding customers to your monitoring list. So um, receiving alerts on any adverse moving forward if anything does change once you've onboarded your, your customer. So now I'll get Caitlin just to introduce herself um, and share some insights on what's happening in the market. So. Over to you, Caitlin. Thanks, Annette, and thanks everyone for joining um, us today on the webinar. Um, so at Creditor Watch, we help hundreds of customers improve their end-to-end -end, uh, processes, and my role is predominantly focusing uh, working with customers on that onboarding um, and streamlining that whole onboarding process. So ultimately, that's a very important step, and it's the first step in that end-to-end -end credit risk process. Um, and we're seeing more and more businesses that are wanting to give their customers a great digital experience, um, but as well as ensuring that their internal processes are efficient and compliant. Um, so that's kind of the area that we'll be focusing on today in that. Perfect. Thank you. So we'll, we'll get into um, the next step, which is signing off um, on your credit application and terms and conditions. So that leads us to 
um, the e-signatures. Um, so, you know, part of the onboarding process, a really important um, part. So a common challenge that we, we do come across um, is that customers, you know, filling out the application, um, it can take so long to return that completed form because they need to get to a printer, a scanner, um, and it can just really speed up that process and delay, um, you know, you onboarding that customer. Um, electronically signing forms, um, so electronic signatures have become increasingly popular um, and even become the, I guess, expected way of life nowadays. Um, however, there's still, you know, questions around whether electronic signatures are actually legally binding um, or even accepted in Australia. So I was just hoping Kate can help address um, yeah, and, and run through that with us today. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I, in short, the answer is yes, they are legally binding, like you can see on the screen there. Um, but first, let's talk about why. So e-signatures provide your customers with a very easy and immediate way to engage with your business. Uh, they can do it all via their phone, tablet, laptop. Um, it removes that whole requirement of them needing to print um, and scan anything. It's So it's really your customers that are driving um, the adoption of this technology above anything else. Um, everything that they do nowadays is via online portals and it's really crucial that we understand and can leverage this technology. Uh, now, in terms of the legalities around e-signatures themselves, um, they are compliant with the Australia's with Australia's Electronic Transaction Act, um, and they're even encouraged by the New South Wales government, as you can see in those screenshots that are on the screen. Um, and those on the call who are a bit more security conscious, um, the electronic signatures do use tamper-proof cryptographic technology. Um, and we're also ISO certified. So there is a lot involved in obtaining that certification. Um, and if you do want more information, we can definitely send some documentation out. Um, but for now, as a bit of a high level, yes, it's legally accepted. We have the certifications, um, the New South Wales government use it. Um, so that should provide a bit more assurance um, that the technology is secure and reliable in it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Caitlin. I think um, we've both seen, you know, how popular e-signature technology is with our customers. It's just so convenient. Um, and now, I guess, gone are the days of um, customers printing out and, and scanning documents. Yeah, exactly. So leading into the next um, part of the onboarding um, process, um, we really wanted to touch on trade references. Um, so I guess historically, um, if you were providing credit terms to another business, um, you would require references from other trade credit providers. Um, this can be quite a, I guess, biased process, as we all know, because as someone looking for credit, um, they wouldn't be giving out details of a vendor um, that keep paying late. Instead, they'll provide the details of a business that they have a really good relationship with. Um, so that's where it forms that bias um, side. So what other, I guess, issues, Caitlin, are there with trade references? And yeah, why are they so, I guess, problematic for trade credit providers that are on the call today? Yeah, there's some really good points um, there actually. So a lot of people like trade references because it gives them a sense of security that another business has, you know, had a good experience with that customer before. Um, it's a comfort zone. However, it does provide a false sense of security and it typically then creates more of an admin burden uh, when you're approving these applications instead of spending that time problem solving, for example. Um, why? Exactly like you said, Annette, people will generally only provide you with a good reference. Um, and I get it, of course, they're not going to put down somebody that they, they pay badly. Um, however, you're not then getting an indicative, like um, broader, you're not understanding what their broader credit experience is across the market. Um, it's not a reflection of how they're actually paying um, their vendors or how they're going to work with you in a credit sense. Um, and then onto that second point, it does, it creates um, admin straight away. So you're committing yourself and your team to um, all these manual tasks in order to advance that application to that next step. Um, so these manual tasks also aren't necessarily easy to do. 
you've got um, you've got to call these people. You're waiting on them um, to if if they even are going to give you a reference. A lot of people don't necessarily give references anymore. Um, if they do, you're waiting for them to call you back. You're waiting for them to respond to your email. You're spending time chasing them up. Um, and then if they do um, respond and you get their reference, what's it worth anyway? If if you're only relying on you know two two references that your customers give you that they pay well, that doesn't really paint the whole picture. Um, so I guess the point here is, is that you're basically bringing in all of these variables and you're not actually guaranteed that you're going to get a better result. Um, you, you're adding more time um, into that process without necessarily any payoff. Yeah, good point, absolutely. So I guess what can um, trade credit providers do um, instead of using trade references and, and why? Yeah, so there are a few other ways we kind of recommend um, doing that due diligence process, um, primarily using our credit or watch data. Um, so we have a whole range of data, payment rating data, risk score information, default data. Um, it's all reliable um, data from thousands of Australian businesses, um, which is reflective of the broader market experience that that customer is having. Yeah, yeah. Um, 100%. So if, um, what if businesses, if like they still want to capture, um, they want to keep doing trade references simply because mm. they use it at a later stage. Can they still yeah, capture those details? Yeah, definitely. And I should note that it, it, we're not saying not to do trade references at all. Uh, we're just saying don't make it the norm. Um, use them in conjunction with our other reliable data um, and things like personal guarantees as well as necessary. Um, don't solely rely on um, the responses you get from two contacts that that customers provided you. Yeah, perfect. And so yeah, 100% agree. Um, so now kind of moving on from the trade references to the next stage of um, onboarding, um, we wanted to touch on, you know, PPSR, why, um, you know, why do PPSR, is it worth it? So it can be quite a complex matter. Um, there is legislation around what you can and, and can't do, um, how to register, what can be registered, etc. It goes on. Um, so we do suggest seeking legal advice on whether your business um, can or should be registering assets on the PPSR. If you do register or can register, um, Creditor Watch can make it super easy for you to do. Once the customer has filled out your application and it has been approved, um, you can register with the other button. Um, you know, there's no need to log on to a, another third party portal yet again. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, what, what are your yeah, thoughts on, on that side of things, Caitlin? Yeah. You're absolutely right. It's super easy to do. Um, and then in the event that a customer does go bust while they're still owing you um, money on goods, for example, um, having registered your interest on the PPSR, you will be in a much better position to be able to recover, um, recover them and minimize that loss. So if you are registering currently or you've identified that you should be, um, doing so quickly at the time that you actually are approving those applications is really important. Um, and if you do want some more information on that um, or whether you should be registering at all, uh, we do have a specialist at Creditor Watch that um, can reach out and help you with that, as well as other services um, that can help you with the clauses that you may need in your terms and conditions, for terms and conditions, for example, um, to be able to eligibly um, register. Yeah, perfect. So I think, yeah, definitely we do have a specialist that, that looks after PPSR. So any questions, if you want further information, just like Caitlin mentioned, um, we can have someone reach out and, and get in touch with you. So they were some excellent points, um, but moving on now to, you know, um, is it, why should I change my process? Um, you know, moving on to, if you've got a process and it's not broken yet, why should we move on? Why should we change? So let's compare a manual or paper-based traditional old school um, process versus a digital um, application process. So in our scenario, a manual or paper-based process um, includes a, a PDF form um, or a Word document that your customers would have to, again, download, fill out, print, sign, scan, and then send back. Um, so while there are, I guess, some digital elements in that process, um, there's no automation to really speed up or, or smoothen that pro smoothen that process um, for your end customer. Mm. 
We're taking a look at the digital, sorry, the um, the manual process before we get into the digital. Um, Caitlin, can you just kind of run us through the steps of a paper-based um, application and, and what's involved? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so like you can see on the screen there, there's quite a lot of steps involved in a manual process. Um, let's start with step one, um, PDF application. Okay, that sounds okay. It's it's pretty common. Um, so what's the issue with the PDF application? Uh, quite commonly, we do see businesses will have their PDF app on their um, website, for example, so the prospect can download it, complete it, and there's usually some instructions on where to send it um, upon completion. Um, but what about the apps that don't actually get completed? How can you track who's interested, basically? Um, you can't actually see who's downloaded it, so you, you, there's no way to actually keep you know, up, updated with that information, see if there's any prospects out there that are trying to work with your business. Um, a digital solution, however, they, we do have visibility over, um, over this, and we're able to capture that customer data, even if they have dropped off and don't complete the application. Um, and then another point here is that the PDF really becomes the start of what is quite a cumbersome process for the client, uh, which then kind of takes me into step two here, uh, customer prints, fills and signs the form. So this is quite inconvenient for their client, especially those who are spending their days on the road. Um, they're not necessarily in an office. Um, and then this, that can then start to delay in that, this, pro this whole process from this point forward. Um, it's just not a very good customer experience and that's one of the main things here. Uh, we also mentioned so this is where they sign. Um, how are they signing? If they aren't printing and wet signing, are they using a screen grab of another signature um, from somewhere else? How compliant is that? Um, and we'll talk more about this in step four, uh, but this is where a lot of those hiccups start to happen. So the incorrect information um, being provided or missing information, for example. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of loop back to that in step four. Uh, step three, uh, they're scanning the completed form and submitting it back to you. So like in step two, this is super inconvenient for the applicant. We're, we're assuming that the customer um, has, has access to a scanner. However, if they're working from home, for example, um, they might not have access to that scanner until they're in the office next week. So we're constantly adding more and more days onto the process um, for them just being able to submit that completed application to you. Um, and in saying that, if if you have competitors who do have an easy digital um, platform that they can get set up within a few days, um, then you could be potentially losing customers. Uh, and we do find out when speaking with our customers that a lot, um, this is where a lot of that delay is just them getting that final application back to you and it can often delay it up to three days. Yeah, you make, you make some good points, especially like you were saying, um, it is super inconvenient for the applicant, um, you know, which is, it's not professional. And nowadays, like we've mentioned, you know, everyone's always online, um, they've got their phone handy. And if there's a yeah. competitor that is that has a digital online form in place and you don't, um, your customers could be going elsewhere and choosing those competitors over you. Yeah, yeah, 100%. They're, they're, everyone's just gonna go for the easier, whatever's easier for them. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, once you do receive that submitted uh, document back, um, the application back, uh, we're kind of onto step four where you're reviewing the application and completing the credit check. So it does, this is a pretty standard step. Um, you get the application back, complete that review. Uh, however, in a manual process like this, if we refer back to step two, this is where a lot of time can be spent going back and forth with the customer. Um, for things like, for example, if their handwriting is illegible, uh, if the application's missing information, um, because there's no controls in a PDF, you can't make things mandatory like you can in um, like a digital form. Um, maybe they provided the wrong, like incorrect information, uh, they've not signed correctly, or maybe they've signed in the wrong spot. Um, so basically you're having to push that customer back from your step four all the way back to your step two, um, as many times as it takes for you to actually receive something that is suffice. Yeah, so you're just going back and forth, back and forth, not capturing the right information. Um, so yeah, yeah, it sounds like a massive, massive headache. <laughs> yeah, massive headache and admin burden for sure. Um, 
And now while you're actually working through that step um, with the customer going back and forth, you also have the pressure of the sales team who are waiting for the customer's account to be open. So they want it to move from step four to five as soon as possible yesterday if they could. Um, so having that added pressure we find has can often lead to approving applications with incorrect information. Um, so then you've really got documents that have no, they're not meaningful, you can't rely on them. Yeah, I mean, we've had lots of multiple customers, um, you know, tell us that this step really does cause a lot of, um, I guess, tension and, and headache again <laughs> within the business when it comes to the finance and, and sales team. Yeah, exactly. And I, I mean, you, the credit management team are trying to do their job efficiently um, and effectively with the correct information. Um, but meanwhile, obviously, the sales team, they've got their own targets that they need to meet as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, step six, so save the final version. So having a PDF doc saved electronically is fine, uh, but the problem is, is how are you storing it? How do you know that it's the latest version? So some of the common problems that we see here are um, if the, maybe the application is stored within that credit manager's inbox, um, that basically it sits there until they leave and then they leave the business and then it's lost. Uh, or maybe maybe it is printed and manually filed away somewhere. So there is some sort of processing place, but it can be quite manual or it can be quite expensive. Um, so things like think about, does someone physically need to visit a storage room or a site um, if they need to retrieve a copy of assigned terms and conditions um, urgently? Um, or if you're scanning them and filing them electronically, how reliable is that scanning system that you're using? Uh, moving on to step seven, so losses occur. Um, so this really boils down to if you do have a loss, um, you may be unable to recover it if your processes from one through to seven, one through to six um, are insufficient or non-compliant. So for example, if you have approved an application based on an incorrect ABN, um, maybe it's too difficult to read, is, has there been a change of directors and you haven't actually kept track of that? Um, can you find all of the documents that you need? Can you find those terms and conditions that have the signature on them? Um, and then a lot of our customers often tell us that uh, small losses are not necessarily worth like the headaches to chase them up. Um, but those small losses could be five to $10,000. So we can actually remove those headaches for you. Uh, and so yeah, to summarize that whole process, uh, the main points on this chart um, they're, on, they're all kind of there on the screen, but it's really important that managing this first credit interaction with the customer is really critical um, for the whole entire duration um, that you have their, their, their relationship with your business. Um, it's important to manage this process properly in order to then uh, mitigate any future risk that they could pose to your business. Yeah, of course. I feel like headache has been a buzzword on this slide. So moving across to a cleaner um, online digital version of a credit application, um, it already looks so much more straightforward and less steps involved. Um, yeah. Can you, Caitlin, just kind of run through, yeah, how it looks for the um, for this site online onboarding? Yeah, definitely. Um, so as you can see, it's it's this is what a digital process should look like. It's what it can look like. It's very, sim it's streamlined um, and it's quick. So step one, the applicant will complete an online form with the electronic signature. It can all be done from their phone, tablet, laptop. Um, the next step is the information is validated, um, or sorry, first step, the information can be validated as they're going through. So before they've even submitted it, information is validated and pre-filled throughout the form. Um, and we can have mandatory fields in, in a digital form. So you're making sure that all that crucial information is provided to you before it even hits your inbox. Um, step two, the credit manager re reviews the application and conducts um, additional due diligence if required. Um, and then step three, approving or rejecting the application. Um, and then once you do approve it, that entity will automatically be added onto the monitoring list um, within Creditor Watch. So you're constantly watching that customer um, and not just doing that initial once-off check and then forgetting about them. 
Um, and then I would like to emphasis, um, emphasize here that the any additional time that it will take you in this process um, is based on your requirements to do additional due diligence. So rather than spending time chasing a customer to complete forms correctly, you're actually using that time productively. Um, so for example, you could go into the platform and you could check all the cross directorships related to that entity. Um, and you're finding out more information and to basically make more informed decisions, um, what credit limit you're going to give this customer. Um, rather than spending all of that time chasing trade references or yeah. trying to read a customer's handwriting, for example. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So I guess just to kind of summarise, there's some really good points, um, what you explained, Caitlin. Um, a digital onboarding process um, will give you, of course, overall improved customer experience while ensuring you're, I guess, capturing all the information accurately. So you're getting all that information um, and you're not going back and forth. Um, it's convenient. So it's, I guess, higher application completion rate. You're getting the more um, applications in the door. Um, a manual process is not, I guess, scalable for businesses as you grow. Um, digital solutions, you know, give you visibility into incomplete applications, like you mentioned. So um, there's no missed opportunities. You're going, you, you'll see any traction that's come through. Um, and then protecting your assets when customers go bust, that PPSR part of the piece. Um, so quite a few, I guess, um, points like minimise manual tasks and errors um, is a huge one. Um, and then ensure diligence and mitigate future risk with that monitoring piece that, with, that you just mentioned there, Caitlin. So yeah, thank you for running through that. Yeah, that's right. And that's exactly it. Everything that we're doing in this onboarding stage um, is focused on protecting your business from, from future risk. So on that, note um, with online in onboarding. So for those of you who aren't um, familiar with our onboarding solutions, um, we do have a online credit application tool with um, automated decisioning capabilities. So we provide an auto recommendation pulled on what's pulling through from, um, from the Creditor Watch platform, from the credit reports. Um, it's a mobile, it's mobile accessible without the need to, you know, download an application. So, or an app, sorry. So customers can quickly um, fill out your online form anywhere. They don't need a laptop. It's super convenient. Um, they can get straight to it. Um, and because it does have that autofill capability, it's pulling through the information and verifying it. Um, it just speeds up the process, I guess, even, even faster. Um, and using it on your phone um, means that it's, again, even easier to electronically sign your terms and conditions and get that complete application back. Mm -hmm. um, it's also cost effective and quick to set up. So we've built this um, online digital application form at a cost that is, I guess, um, accessible for businesses of all shapes and sizes. Um, and we can get you up and running pretty quickly with minimal work required on your end. So once we work with you, once your online form is set up and ready to go live, um, your customers can complete their applications pretty much straight away online. Um, and you also can quickly manage the approvals um, with our risk data all in the one spot. So there's no, um, you know, kind of looking around and looking at separate documents. You've got all that information in front of you so you can make a quick decision um, and get that application processed. Definitely. Um, so I guess there's so much to cover um, to do with customer onboarding and due diligence. There's quite a lot of steps and there's, you know, um, it's, a, it's an important part of the process. It sets the foundation for the relationship and the, the credit process moving forward. Um, but to finish, I guess, today's session, um, we, thought it, we thought it would be good just to run through some common questions um, and, and questions, any address any questions that I guess have come through um, today in the, um, in the webinar. So there are some questions around what documents can actually be electronically signed with the e-signature we touched on. So generally, you customers will have their application, their credit application and terms and conditions signed off together. And then a lot of customers also have direct guarantee documents in there as well. So pretty much any documents that you require sign off from your customer, we can include in the electronic signature um, once the application is submitted and they've entered in all that, that 
detail. Hope that, that answers that. Um, there's a few queries that we've had in relation to PPSR. So we do have a, um, an amazing specialist here at Creditor Watch um, who will be able to reach out to you individually um, and, and assist with any questions that you have um, in relation to, yeah, registering on the PPSR. Got, can we get some more information around risk data? So yes, so with the credit application, once it is approved, we do give, I'm sorry, once it's submitted, jumping ahead, um, we do give you an auto recommendation, um, whether you should approve or not, which of course you can override. Um, but you also get a full copy of the updated, um, the credit report. So that contains various information data points. You've got information pulling from ASIC and ABR, um, debt collectors, there's around 250 that, that pull through information, the courts around Australia, so you can see court actions, um, trade payment data and behaviour, so how your customers are paying other suppliers, um, and then payment defaults if they've ever defaulted before. So they're kind of the main um, data points that we're pulling through on the credit report, but there's a, a lot more to it as well. Hmm. Uh, so I got, do you want to jump in, Caitlin? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had a couple of questions come through on this side that I'll just run through. Um, the first one, uh, what if customers are wanting to change the clauses um, within the terms and conditions, will it be accepted? Um, so the idea of our e-signature is that they shouldn't be. Um, your terms and conditions, you know, you want, those, if they want to work with you um, to make sure that, you know, all your clauses are covered, um, they shouldn't be changing them. Um, but that one, we can kind of dive into more of a conversation about that um, separately um, to find out why, because we do have some workarounds. Um, can prefill be used on the latest online application process? Um, again, it's the, kind of a more, it's not such a specific answer. Um, we can, there are some workarounds that we can use. We have save for later functions, whereas information can be filled in um, prior to the applica applicant receiving um, the link to the application. Um, so we might touch on that one as well separately. Uh, Julie has asked, would you not get trade references at all? Um, I think a, a common thing that we're seeing now is that more and more businesses are moving away from trade references. Um, I know a lot of applications that we've set up recently, um, either if, if they do have the trade references in their applications, they're left as optional. And I mean, if it's an optional field, a lot of people are not going to fill it out anyway. Um, so it really boils down to are you relying on that information to make your decisions? Um, and if you're there kind of just nice to has and you're not, um, you can remove them from the application and it just streams like that process, streamlines that process even more for the applicant. Um, let me just go through a few of these. There are a few questions that have come through. Um, how do three guarantors sign the same electronic document? Um, it can be done. So if there's you know, three directors, all three need to sign. Um, the way the application works, it's all dynamic. So um, they'll all get a copy of the document um, to sign in their um, separate sections. Um, there's a few others in here, um, but I think what we might do is we can address those ones um, individually as well. Um, later today, Annette and I can um, definitely reach out. Um, and if you do have any other questions as well um, on how we can help improve that customer onboarding process, um, if you'd like a, a demonstration of the Apply Easy platform, um, or again, any PPSR questions, please, um, there's a QR code on the screen, you can scan that. Um, and then we, Annette and I can reach out to you directly. I think there'll be a poll popping up as well in a moment, which you can um, select to be contacted if you wish. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for coming today. Um, thanks, thanks, Annette. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Caitlin. Thanks for um, yeah, sharing your knowledge and, and insights with us today. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us and taking the time out of your day. We really appreciate it. Hope this session was valuable. Um, and um, yeah, we hope to see you again soon. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Annette. Thank you. Bye. Bye.